to jump it up. And Louisville wins the tip. Washington native Van Lift fires a little too strong. Flag down by Chris Lynn Carr. Louisville playing in its fifth straight Elite Eight. Now the longest active streak in the country after Connecticut's loss yesterday. And Van Lift begins with a bucket. And a great middle of the floor screen. You're going to see a lot of that. Whoever Monica Sanano is guarding will step out and set the on-ball screen. Warnock, a quick three, rims out, and Cochran secures for Louisville. Taking a look at our Capital One starting lineups, the 90th start together for the Iowa starting five, most in Division One over the last 20 seasons, as Van Lith flips in another. Off of a middle ball screen with Sanano's defender. Monica Zanano has to play drop coverage because of her quickness and on the middle of the floor, and Louisville knows that they can take advantage of that. You see on-ball screen, Martin tries to fight over Sanano a little bit late. Haley Van Lith very good in the mid-range. Clark, a deep one, back iron, no. Rebound, Cochran, good start for Louisville. Jeff Wall said more than anything else, we have to be able to score tonight against Iowa. Here it is again. Van Lith will pull again. That one a little too strong, and the rebound secured by Iowa. Gabby Marshall, who shot it very well from three of late, looking inside, and Sinano gets called for the offensive foul. So an early personal on Monica Sinano. You know that on offense, Monica Sanana wants to get deep position. Jeff Wall's telling us this morning we have to keep her out of that comfort zone. Make her catch it farther away from the basket because when she catches it inside, she's money. Sanano four times a part of the All Big Ten team. Van Litt squeezes it out, and Robinson gets the roll. You take a look at the Capital One starting lineup for Louisville. Mikasa Robinson entering that starting lineup. One of the pivot points of the season for Louisville. A Swiss Army knife who does a little bit of everything. A leader, a grinder. One of the things to take note of on this end of the floor, number two, Nyla Harris is the one guarding Caitlin Clark. Harris is a post player, but at 6'2", Jeff Walls thinks her length can give Clark some issues. Lisa Bluter in her 23rd season as Iowa head coach seeking her first Final Four. Martin gets free, can't hit the three, long board car, Louisville off and running. Here's Van Lith. Van Lith thought about it, will pull from two, and hit! Haley Van Lith is feeling it! <laughs> Holly was positioned just in front of Sue, and I think just ducked down. Pursues camera shot there. And Iowa travels out of the timeout. Sue still laughing about it. Not the start that Iowa wanted, but absolutely the start that Louisville was looking for. And Louisville has been on this stage, went to the Final Four a season ago. Jeff Walls has had incredibly sustained success at Louisville now in his 16th season. Cochran surrounded by three, finds Robinson, no. Nice job of the glass by Harris, but couldn't control it. And it's out of bounds to Iowa. Smart decision, though, to go into Cochran because Sanano already has the one foul. But how quickly did the double and triple team come yeah. from her Iowa teammates? Pressure applied by Louisville. Now, Iowa handled Ohio State's press wonderfully earlier this season. Louisville's press, not quite what we're going to see tomorrow night from Ohio State. But Louisville, a terrific defensive team as Clark finally shakes free and gets Iowa on the board. Well, Harris, of course, has a sides advantage, but Clark does have the quickness when she's going to put the ball on the deck. Here's Van Lith, has it stolen by Clark. Clark trying to outrace Cochran, able to pizza pie at home. And what do we see now from Iowa? Last possession, they were in a zone. That was the change from Lisa Bluter, knowing that Louisville was taking advantage of that middle ball screen. One of the things Lisa Bluter told us was we're going to have to change up our defensive looks often throughout the game. 
Harris can't finish it over Sonato, who already has one foul. Here is Clark. And they had to because uh, Sonato. Clark simply... will pull. Can't hit on the deep one. Yeah, simply couldn't handle it. Speaking of not handling it, out of bounds off of Louisville, and it's Iowa basketball. So Peyton Clark at six feet has a 6-2 defender on her, uses her quickness, slithers by, able to score, and then out in transition. This is where Iowa really flourishes when they can get out quickly. Clark connects on a three, seven straight from Caitlin Clark. Sue Bird finally getting to watch Caitlin Clark in person. I know she watches her regularly on TV. Here's Carr. Marissa Russell into the game for Louisville. She has played really well over the last few weeks. Carr, she got it. Chrislyn Carr knocks down the triple. So they took advantage of Iowa in the man-to-man -man with the middle ball screen. And now that Iowa is in a zone defense, that's what Louisville's going to have to do is hit shots from deep. Marshall wanted it. Instead, Sonano is fouled as Clark dumped it in. Caitlin Clark able to step into her three. And yeah, you could take a deep breath now. <laughs> it's one thing when you go down eight, but to be able to see the ball go through the hoop. And missed her first two threes. That last hit Caitlin Clark? No. Last hit Van Lith. Although, say the ball hit out of bounds before it hit Clark, perhaps. The officials are going to confer, and that's why it's going to remain with Iowa. And Jeff Walls is still befuddled as he saw it hit the leg of Clark. Here's Warnock. No. Sonano keeps it alive. Marshall gets a good look. In and out on a three, and Robinson corrals the rebound. Iowa's had some really good looks from three that have rimmed in and out. They are now one of seven from downtown. Robinson more aggressive with her shot of late, and it's made a difference for Louisville offensively. Warnock, meanwhile, looks like she's dealing with some blood in the mouth. And a Stolke, impressive freshman. Big getting ready to check in for Iowa. Clark, great feed. Warnock, she got it. Did you see all the defensive attention that went to Caitlin Clark off of that on-ball screen? And she is so accustomed to delivering it to open teammates. And Caitlin Clark, the first player in Division I history with 900 points and 300 assists in the same season. Van Lith. And answer, rebound Marshall. 13-10, Louisville lead. Oh, what a find, Clark to Warnock. And a nice response from Iowa after the early right hook from Louisville. And Mikasa Robinson is yelling at her teammate, Marissa Russell, saying, let's go, you can't tie your shoe right now. <laughs> Marissa Russell's like, yes, I can. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of Mikasa Robinson <laughs> yelling at me, though. I hear you. Cochran got fouled, and who's it on? Martin and Sonano were there. If it's Sonano, it's her second. It is Martin, it's her first. The Stars flourishing early. Yeah, they've come to play. Haley Van Lith, Caitlin Clark combining for 13 points early in this one. Full doubles, only Sabrina Ionescu with more. Here is Cochran. Gets the first. Olivia Cochran, now a junior. See her numbers in the tournament. Jeff Walls always raves about her footwork, her hands. She hasn't learned to miss the second free throw so that you can't get a sub in for you. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Clark, quickly ahead. Marshall, catch, fire. No. Stolke, the rebound, keeps it alive for Iowa. This is a game I think Hannah Stolke can be really important because of her athleticism at the post position going against Louisville's athletic bigs. Clark draws the foul against Robinson. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Final Four begins Saturday at 6 Eastern on CBS. For more information, 
Go to NCAA.com, just like everybody predicted it. You know, San Diego State, Florida Atlantic, <laughs> UConn, Miami. As Clark hits the first. First team All-American, Caitlin Clark now up to nine points, two assists in this opening quarter. Iowa trying to go to just its second Final Four, first since 1993. Louisville trying to make it back-to-back -back years in the Final Four. Carr will fire. And hit from three. Chris Lynn Carr, hot early for Louisville. Really nice job by Louisville, too, against that zone to switch sides of the floor and find Carr when she was open. Stolke forces it up. No, Russell there defensively. Van Lift pushing pace. Here's Carr. Carr finding some space, a deep two, that one too strong. Sonano couldn't grab the rebound, last hit her, out of bounds to Louisville. Switching side of the, of the floor, so important against the zone, especially with the skip pass, and Carr able to sit, step into that one. And just in case you didn't know, it was a three. Carr's journey took her from Texas Tech to Baylor, where she didn't play a game, to Syracuse, and now to Louisville where she's 15th in Division I in three-point shooting percentage. One of the reasons why Louisville took a little while to blossom this season was because of the transfers. They rely heavily on them, and sometimes it's just not the quickest integration. It can take a while, and for Louisville, they eventually obviously figured it out. Yeah, and it's not just about the excellence as I was. It's about teaching new players a different culture and a different expectation of what the coach wants every single day in practice. Nice box out there from Stolke, who you see blasting down the floor afterwards. Clark, look at a shake free. Clark, step back three, is good! When they've had a big defender on her, she's gone by. With the smaller defender on her, she can easily get her shot off from deep. 88th consecutive game in double figures for Caitlin Clark. She has 12 in the first. Van Lith can't hit. Another nice box out from Stolke. Great box out from Stolke and Watcher. She'll still beat the post down the floor. She is an excellent rim runner. Here's Clark, guarded by Robinson. Clark firing again. Oh my! Caitlin Clark, a showstopper. Iowa's first lead. Van Lith bangs into Stolke, no call. Here comes Clark, look out, the dish. Warnock couldn't handle. Go ahead and put a smaller defender on Caitlin Clark. Look at the step back, hop into it. The three, and then again, a different defender, but still on the smaller side <laughs> and able to hit it. And she's letting us know too, Ryan, it's a three. She is one of one. It, look at that. She shoots 58% from 25 plus feet. That is absurd. <laughs> 20 to 18 Iowa lead. Here's Carr. Giving it out. Morgan Jones and off the bench for Louisville. Been playing really good basketball. Stokey's all over the place right now. Outstanding. And she only played a couple minutes in there second or in their sweet 16 game against Colorado but impactful Clark not that time good box out by Dixon to keep Stolke off the offensive glass here's Carr floating it to no one in particular Martin comes up with a steal Clark on the attack will dish 15 points in the quarter for Clark zings it cross court catch fire and hit for Martin Another dime from Caitlin Clark. That pass looked relatively easy. That is a tough pass to make on the money. A 9-0 Iowa run. Clark, the engine driving it. Louisville has a two for one. Carr hits another three. 
Chris Lincar now three for three from downtown. And as Iowa has switched between a 2-3 zone and a 1-2-2 zone, the player that's been the answer for Louisville has been Chris Lincar. Outstanding opening quarter in Seattle, Washington. Charged up atmosphere. Clark waiting, just a four second difference game in shot clock. Here's Clark, cross the handle momentarily. Clark looking to shake Jones. Dumps it underneath, Warnock banks it in. That'll do it for the first. Louisville jumped out early. Caitlin Clark and Iowa answered. A four point Iowa lead after one, a trip to the final four on the line. Order in her career. Also had four assists. Van Lith and Carr have combined to score 15 of Louisville's 21 points. Outstanding crowd here. Iowa has traveled a truckload of people, and Haley Van Lift has more relatives than anybody I know. And right now, Haley Van Lift is one of the uh, lucky ones as a two in Iowa's triangle and two. So the fourth defense we've seen here in this game so far from Iowa. Van Lift, of course, went to Kashmir High School in Washington, just about two and a half hours away. Clark trying to force that one. Van Lith scrapping for it, and that was a quick tie-up call, and that's what Van Lith is contesting, and I think she has a decent argument there. Looked like she was clearly going to win it. In women's basketball, Ryan, they blow the whistle very quickly on yeah. tie ball, <laughs> jump ball calls. Possession arrow belongs to Iowa, so it's going to stay here. Here's Clark open in the corner. She got it. That is not where you want to leave Caitlin Clark. Where is where you want to leave her? Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Nowhere on the floor, that's for no, sure. No, no. 18 for Clark. Cochran able to lay it in. Really nice dribble penetration. Send the two offensive players who are part of the man-to-man -man in the triangle and two to the corners. Give yourself spacing for dribble, for the dribble drive. Clark surveying, Sonano sets the screen, and Cochran did a nice job there, as she has against Sonano. Cochran is doing an outstanding job preventing Monica Sonano from moving freely within the paint. It's a really good defensive team that Louisville has. We saw that against Ole Miss in the Sweet 16. Here's Clark giving it up, Sonano able to lay it in. A masterful finish on a physical possession. But that's what she does. She gets that deep position, so all she has to do is catch and finish. Oh, Jones, nice fake, and lays it in. That's As Jeff Wall says, Morgan Jones can go by anybody. Jeff Wallace has to be thrilled with that because today in shoot-around, they were working on something similar, and that left lane was there, and instead she went back to her strong right hand. Deflected by Jones in transition. She coughs it up out of bounds. Iowa basketball. Guys, Jeff Walls talked about not giving Caitlin Clark easy looks. I mean, if you see here, two defenders are going to go to the offense, and that can't happen because Caitlin Clark is too wide open. On the defensive end, there has to be more communication to bump and get to Clark. Yeah, you don't want to be leaving Clark in the corner as Clark takes a timeout here. So that possession, they don't leave her in the corner. They double team her instead, and she uses the timeout to save it. Timeout on the floor. Good one here in Seattle, Iowa. Yeah. That's all right. We don't mind that, Al. You take a look at the Division I coaches to lead multiple programs to a Final Four. Kim Mulkey joining Gary Blair and C. Vivian Stringer, who took Iowa to its only Final Four. Just the three coaches to do that in Division I. It's hard to overstate just how incredible what Kim Mulkey has done at LSU is. It's her third year. It's amazing. It was her second year. Second year. Second year. It's her second year. Sonano gets behind the D and reverses it in. Great entry from Martin, and that is the first points of the game for Iowa that were not scored or assisted on by Caitlin Clark. Sonano, a 2,000 point scorer like Clark. 
The fifth year senior has been dynamic for Iowa as Jones continues to make a real impact for Louisville. But Iowa will live with that shot. You do not want Morgan Jones driving by you because she is so good when she puts the ball back. Look, it's sending two players at her and two players with size. And a tie up right away. Cochran and Jones able to force the turnover. The possession arrow belongs to Louisville. In the previous possession, we saw Monica Sanano scoring inside. How efficient has she been throughout the course of the tournament so far, including tonight? She is 28 from 39. And look at where all her shots are coming from. And what makes it pretty incredible, Ryan, all of those shots, one total dribble this entire NCAA tournament. Right. That's not, Rebecca Lobo's not stuttering there. One total dribble the entire tournament. That's, I mean, that's a ridiculous It came, it came to start the second half of the Georgia game. Meanwhile, Louisville, nice response here. Oh, Clark shook free a moment. Warnock able to knock down from three. Just sent to, to Caitlin Clark that time. She sees Warnock open on the left wing and delivers it. Eighteen points, six assists for Clark. Iowa still in the triangle and two. It's been their most effective defense so far. Robinson, no. Rebound, Sonato. Iowa, seven of 15 from three. Look at two, two players shadowing Caitlin Clark. Warnock again. McKenna Warnock delivering. Timeout, Louisville. And Jeff Walls fired up, giving instruction to Morgan Jones. All right, freeze right here. Take a look at what Jeff Walls is doing defensively. 6-2 defender, 6-3 defender. They are both shadowing Caitlin Clark. And what does that leave? That leaves Warnock open in the corner. Drive and kick. Jeff Wall's trying to figure out something, as have teams <laughs> all season long and coaches all season long to slow down Caitlin Clark trying to trap her with size. Well, for the third straight year, every NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships, all games on the ESPN networks and the ESPN app. It continues tomorrow. South Carolina, Maryland, and then Ohio State, Virginia Tech. Warnock comes down with a rebound, then throws it away. Harris on the deflection with Robinson, and Martin takes it back. Again, size on Caitlin Clark. Clark sings it all. That's a ridiculous pass that she makes look so casual. Clark will fire, and hit! The walking highlight reel, Caitlin Clark has 21 points and seven assists in this half. It's a 9-0 response from Iowa, right as it seemed like Louisville was starting to steady things. Van Liff gives it up to Robinson. No, Cochran gets fouled by Clark. Ryan, the last four or five possessions, Iowa has forced We'll get back to that here. Caitlin Clark, you know when she goes left, watch out. That's where she is comfortable. Caitlin Clark, 21 points, seven assists, has scored or assisted on 38 of her team's 41 points, Holly Rowe. Well, she is an improved player. She's been putting up big numbers her entire career, but this year she's even better. She's added eight pounds of muscle from 145 to 155 at times this season. She said she's also worked hard on her mental game. She watches film of herself to see how she's talking to her teammates, what her body language is to make sure she's staying positive. And then she's done some mental conditioning work with Brett Ledbetter, talking to herself in a positive way. She says, I am focusing on peace in the quest, that there has to be peacefulness about how I go about this quest of winning. And that's what we're seeing from her. Love that quote that phrase, peace in the quest. Meanwhile, Jeff Walls, very happy to see that offensive foul called on Molly Davis because he felt 
Louisville got called for a ticky tack on the possession before. But the last five possessions, five or six possessions, defensively, Iowa has forced what they want. Yeah. And that is players other than Haley Van Lith and other than Kristen Clark to take deep twos. You are winning defensively if that's the shot you are making Louisville settle for. That time it's Van Lith who knocks it down. Haley Van Lith, who has scored at least 20 in seven of her last eight NCAA tournament games. She has averaged just under 23 in this tournament. The junior who's already been to a Final Four. The floater is short from Molly Davis. Van Lith, she got it! Haley Van Lith coming up big when Louisville needs her. And mom and dad saying, finally, all right, she's getting some looks. At least that's my interpretation of dad's <laughs> body language there as he's hanging off the chair. <laughs> Sonato, great touch pass. Davis can't hit, box out Cochran, an opportunity for Louisville to creep a little closer. Sonato didn't see Warnock wide open on the backside block. Russell, no. Great job by Sonano, fending off Cochran in some trouble now and fouled by Robinson. That'll be the second on Mikasa Robinson. Haley Van Lith coming down, and that's the most space she's had in a while as she steps into the three. Corey and Jessica, always very into the action. A lot of number 10 jerseys over there, Holly Rowe. Well, in the last game, she had over 300 people who had driven that two and a half hours to be here to support her. Mom, dad, those are her aunts, her grandma's here. But more importantly, busloads of people came from Kashmir High School. I've been told by the NCAA committee here they sold an additional 2,000 tickets. I'm not sure if it's for Haley Van Lith or Iowa, though. It could be a close tie. <laughs> they both have brought their fans. Clark. Not that time. Rebound Robinson. Louisville down seven. That's a foul on Martin. And Ryan, important to note, and you hit on it, that Robinson got her second foul the last time down. Well, this is what we're talking about, Rebecca, when it comes to how nearby the hometown is for Haley Van Litt. Kashmir High School, you saw how close it is. If you leave it this time of night, according to Google Maps, it's just two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> If Holly Rose driving a little less than that. That's right. Yeah, Holly does have a lead foot. Van Liv lost it, and then the foul was called, I believe, on Dixon on the reach in. It is on Dixon, and Van Liv is trying to just plead her case. There was a lot of contact on that drive. And I want to revisit the Robinson picking up her second foul. Yeah. She is so vitally important to them. Jeff Wall said the reason he did not start her on Caitlin Clark, even though she's the best defender, is because he didn't want her getting into foul trouble. So she had gotten a couple possessions on Caitlin Clark, now no longer on her because he doesn't want her to get a third. Russell on Clark, double comes, passes it off. Floater won't go, but free throws coming for Sydney Falter. Thought it was really interesting. We've seen Caitlin Clark pull from 30 feet, 28 feet, off the dribble from the logo. And we were talking with Lisa Bluter about how she manages that. It's something that I've talked to Steve Kerr about with Steph Curry. Is there any way you rein that in? And she talked about how you don't want to put the bushel over the fire, yes. meaning it's part the of her candle. Great. She's a fire? bushel. No, no, bushel. But over the over candle. a fire or a candle? Well, there's a fire in the candle. <laughs> and that's what you've got to be concerned about when it comes to the bushel. And her point was, obviously, it's part of her greatness. You can't reel it in too much, but they've talked about time, score, a little bit, so that it's just a little more pointed, and it's obviously been effective. Clark finds Stolke, who lays it in. Anna Stolke, the freshman, an impressive first half. There's just no one else like her in the women's college game. Russell lines it up and knocks it down. Marissa Russell's three-point shooting has been a major factor for Louisville. And Louisville needs that. We talked about, you know, the deep twos. They need players other than Carr and Van Lith who can step in and make a perimeter shot. 
Here's Clark, giving some space. Guarded by Robinson, who has two fouls. Clark, cross court, finds Marshall. In and out on a three, and a foul against a falter. And Iowa, that is the fourth team foul on Iowa. You know what we need? We often have shot charts. We need an assist chart for Caitlin Clark. Like where her shot, her assists are coming from, and if they're cross court, from if they're corner to opposite wing. Yeah. The degree of difficulty for almost anyone else is ridiculous. The regularity with which she makes those cross court passes is uncanny. Here's Van Lith. Had some space, now we'll take and knock it down. Haley Van Lith makes it a five point game. Clark, guarded by Robinson. Sonato on the bench at the moment. Here's Marshall, open, airmails that one. The putback is good. Sydney a falter on the weak side, able to finish. Iowa back in their man-to-man, -man, and you notice the post player who is in is Stolke, a player who can handle that middle pick and roll. Here it comes. Stolke bangs into Van Lith, and Van Lith works her way to the line. Haley Van Lith does not get tired, and she can't, because look at how hard she works just to get the ball. Nice little screen able to come off and get it. She earned every bit of that one. Haley Van Lith has played all 40 minutes in each of the last two games. It's something she's done 14 times this season. She has played more total minutes than anybody in the country this season. And Jeff Walls told us from the time she was a freshman, she has the kind of work ethic where you have to tell her to stay out of the gym. She will just keep going. It's every player's dream, though, is to stay out on the floor for all 40 minutes, and she's just conditioned herself in a way that she can be effective playing that many minutes. Fifth in major conference play when it comes to minutes per game. And Van Lith hits both free throws. She's done a really nice job to keep Louisville in it down the stretch. Has 10 of the last 13 points for the Cardinals. Shot clock is turned off. Iowa's lead was 12. Moments ago, cut to five here by Louisville. Seven seconds left. Clark separates the foul before that. And Iowa in the bonus, so free throws here for Caitlin Clark. But man, give Harris credit. That's a big, a 6-2 post player down in a stance, moving her feet, staying between Caitlin Clark and the basket. She is working. The freshman is working. I don't want to have to do that. No. <laughs> Jeff Walls raves about the motor of Nyla Harris as Clark hits the free throw. Iowa 5 of 5 from the line, Louisville 4 of 4. It's been a really fluid half of basketball as Clark misses the second. Still time for Iowa. Van Lith eyes the clock. Van Lith will take, got fouled, and Haley Van Lith is going to the line. And if that is on Clark, it is her second. And it is number two on Caitlin Clark. Uh, you can't reach in here. You can't reach in here and risk getting the foul call. Then we'll see, did she get a piece of her? Yep. Yeah, she got her on the arm. That's just a silly mistake. You don't want to do that there. And credit Van Lift for coming down and drawing the foul. Consequential for two reasons, obviously. It puts Van Lift at the line as she misses the first. And then it's also now has to put Foul trouble in the head of Lisa Bluter when it comes to Caitlin Clark. Van Lip, an outstanding free throw shooter, surprised at the miss. Makes the second. One and a half seconds remaining in the second quarter. Jeff Louisville Walls. trying to make it back to back years in the final four. Iowa trying to go to their second ever, their first since 1993. Clark, and that'll do it for the first half. Caitlin Clark, 22 points, eight assists. Three rebounds, Haley Van Lith with 17 points on six of 10 shooting. A tremendous first half of basketball in Seattle.
Iowa five-point lead, and Caitlin is with Holly. Well, Caitlin, your team got off to a poor start. 0-8 run to start the game. They call a timeout. What did you change in that moment to go on a tear? I think just get aggressive on defense. You know, we changed our defense there. You know, they made some tough twos, and that's what we're going to get them. give them. We're going to give them cut, tough contested twos, and uh, they've made some, but all you can do is cut, keep coming down and playing good D. Um, but I thought on off offense, we're getting what we want. So um, some sh more shots will go down. Gabby's getting good looks. Um, so I thought it was a pretty good half. They have thrown the kitchen sink at you defensively. A 6-2 player, a 5-8 player, lots of different bodies. How are you adjusting and reading and reacting in all those different situations? Yeah, I think, you know, picking and choosing when to use my quickness um, and getting around them and knowing when to use my step back and, and turn going to the rim at times, too. So I think, you know, deciding between those two things is what's, you know, going to lead us to the victory. And, um, you know, I think getting the ball inside, too. Mon's got to get more shots. All right, thanks so much. Thank thanks. And two defense, they were committed to it in that first half. Not only contested and tough, but the players that Iowa wants taking those shots. Iowa trailed 8 nothing out of the gates, then built a 12-point lead, or not can it to three. Before Louisville made a push at the end of the second quarter to cut it to five, that's where we are to start the third. A trip to the final four is on the line. Drea, get your crayons out. They're in the triangle in two to start the third <laughs> quarter. Here's Jones. Jones finesses it in. Morgan Jones starting the second half rather than Nyla Harris. And Jones, a player who not only can drive to the basket like that, look who she's guarding. Her length, her size, and athleticism is how they're starting the second half. And Iowa turns it over. Here's Carr off to the races. It is a one-point game. You heard Jeff Wall say to Holly Rowe at the end of the first quarter, we knew it's going to be a game of runs. We knew we'd have to score in the 80s. Louisville's been able to keep up with Iowa offensively. Marshall gives it up. Martin can't hit from three. Cochran secures it just for a moment because Warnock takes it away. <laughs> Marshall hits the three. Huge for Marshall. She started the game 0 for 4 from the three-point line. She's a streaky shooter, has really come alive from the perimeter the last couple of weeks of the season. Jones can't hit the quick jumper. Not sure Jeff Walls loved the shot. Here's Clark. Oh, what a no-look. Warnock finishes. And just like that, five straight from Iowa, and it was created from the hustle of Warnock initially to keep the last possession alive. That one won't drop. Another rebound, Warnock, who's having a huge game. That's not the shot. Clark connects on a three. Timeout, Louisville. An 8-0 Iowa run right after Louisville had cut it to one. Caitlin Clark leads the nation in assists, eight and a half per game. Can find teammates always. Third in the nation in points per game as she hits the deep three. And Iowa, a 56-47 lead. An 8-0 run in the last 65 seconds, Rebecca, after Louisville had cut it to one. You know, Jeff Wallace told us before the game, you know, we're going to need to score 80 in order to win this game. 80's not going to be enough <laughs> with the way Iowa's scoring the basketball. Here's Robinson into the paint. Can't flip it in. Rebound. Banged around. Warnock has it. And then Warnock gets tripped. And it's going to stay with Iowa. How good has McKenna Warnock been so far in this game? She has made such an impact. 15 points. Six of nine from the floor, five rebounds. Gets tripped here. Marshall knocks in the three. And Louisville looks like they are in a triangle and two, but one of the defenders, one of the two, is on Sanano inside, almost daring Gabby Marshall to continue to make from the perimeter. Second three for Marshall. Van Lift, no. Long board, scraped up. Clark zings it into traffic. Russell on the steal into the corner. Van Lift will take. No. Cochran underneath, surrounded, and she is fouled. Sonano and Clark were both there. So was Warnock. And what a game Warnock has had, Holly.
Well, Jeff Walls in that last timeout just told his team that every possession matters, that they're not doing a good enough job to secure the ball, secure the possessions, and be serious about them. He did talk about Olivia Cochran and her rebounding. He said, they are coming after you. You saw it right there. Three white jerseys bodying her up, but she hung tough, hung in there, and got the foul. Olivia on the bench is like, yes, coach, yes, coach, I got you. She is so fired up right now that she knows she's a crucial piece of these possessions counting and getting that ball back. And Holly, she has done an outstanding job on the defensive end of the floor as well, really battling with Monica Sonano. Sonano only with two field goal attempts so far in this game. An 11-0 run ends with those free throws. Not a triangle into a box and one, and the one, of course, on Caitlin Clark. Here's Marshall, thought about it. Martin attacks the closeout, can't lay it in. Here comes Van Lith. Haley Van Lith, eyes up. Robinson, Veers, Dishes, Russell. Van Lith has it deflected by Clark, stolen by Sonato. Kent turnover for Louisville. Caitlin Clark, another 25, five and five game. 18 of those now this year. Nobody's in the same stratosphere. Cochran, unable to hit the mid range. Russell hustling after it. Mikasa Robinson able to win the possession back for Louisville as she draws the foul. I love Mikasa Robinson's game because it is all out heart and muscle. I'm sorry, heart and hustle. Muscle as well. It's muscle, yeah. It's muscle stocky. as well. But if there's a 50-50 ball, my money is on Mikasa Robinson. Going to be a grad assistant next year with Louisville. Somebody with Jeff Walls will gladly keep around the program. A gritty winner, Robinson. Couldn't finish it, foul underneath as Russell hit the deck and the foul is on Warnock. Louisville has missed its last seven shots, but getting back to the line here with Marissa Russell. They saying she wasn't shooting? Oh. She was definitely shooting. Yeah. Yeah, okay. They, they corrected it. And Jeff Walls is going to learn more, even though he gets the result he wanted as Russell hits the first. Well, Marissa Russell is such an inspiring story. She's had to really sit on the bench and not get much playing time. She had to sit by players like Dana Evans and Emily Engsler. And she said, I figured out that if I was the best player the opponents as we see another tough rebound and foul in there she said if I could be the opposing player like Ryan Howard and pretend to be that player on scout team Jeff Walls immediately started to trust me that I could do it out on the court Marissa hit some big shots in their last game and their last win here she is on the free throw line here her toughness has been at a sacrifice and at a cost but she finally has earned the trust of Jeff Walls meanwhile Holly McKenna Warnock just picked up her third foul they've all come in about the last 60 seconds so she checks out Russell keeps it alive and that's huge because Warnock has been outstanding in particular scoring from the outside for Iowa Cochran travels 11th turnover from Louisville so now Iowa goes with the lineup that's a little bit bigger and a little bit less potent from the perimeter Stolke and Sinano in there together neither a threat from three then you have Martin and Marshall who both can shoot it and but, shoot it well, and then Clark, who obviously is nails from deep. Dumps it to Stolke, rolling and traveling. Iowa gives it back. So you, you sacrifice the three-point threat, bringing Stolke in, but what's hurt you the last few minutes from Louisville is their offensive rebounding, so you do bring in another big who can help you on the glass. 59-50, Iowa leading Louisville in this Elite Eight tilt. A Final Four berth on the line. LSU, the one team who has already punched its ticket. Van Liff. Stolke out on her on the switch. Cochran turns, faces, and hits. 
Smooth move there from Olivia Cochran. Came in the same class with Haley Van Lint. They have had a lot of success. An Elite Eight trip this freshman, Final Four last year. Clark can't hit, but guess what? She is fouled by Chrislyn Carr, and Caitlin Clark is going to shoot three free throws when we return. Seven-point game in the third. Olivia Cochran doing what she can for Louisville. She's been battling on the defensive end of the floor. Give me a big girl with a fadeaway right there. Big girl with a fadeaway. Looks like this. 90th game that this starting five has had together. You see her knees right there. I mean, those are bruised knees from Caitlin Clark, who deals with an incredible level of physicality from opposing defenses. I've got a question. I don't know if I have an answer based on the intonation there. Why not wear knee pads? Oh, well, we can ask we'll Caitlin ask after the game. We'll ask her. And if Iowa advances, then we'll have an answer for the semifinals. But one of the things Lisa Bluter told us earlier in the season was she worked with Caitlin before the year on falling less. Felt like she was falling too much trying to sell calls. And she said, that's not going to help you sell calls. Game is hard enough on you physically. We don't need you taking extra hits on your own accord. And she's also falling less simply because she's stronger. To Holly's point about the added muscle. Cochran air balls it out of bounds. Well, for the third straight year, every NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. All games are on the ESPN networks and the ESPN app. The family of networks. Including on our family of networks, the Bird Tarasi show for the semifinals. And final on ESPN2. Martin lines it up. She got it. Iowa just has so many shooters. And that, that was just a miscommunication defensively. Mikasa Robinson, when that shot went up, just put her hands in the air like, who is supposed to be there? 13-3 for Iowa, and they have their largest lead. It is 13. Here's Robinson into the corner. Carr started hot, hit her first three from three. The step back jumper won't go. Cochran doing work underneath. Able to grab the rebound, and who is the foul on? If it's Clark, it'll be her third. You had two players on the perimeter wide open. Gabby Marshall on the left, Kate Martin on the right, and then you see Mikasa Robinson. Look at her reaction, hands in the air. Guys, come on, somebody's got to get out to the shooter. Stolke whistled for the foul, and that is her second. Cochran to the line. It's the first. Olivia Cochran, one, one. nine points, five of five from the line, nine rebounds. She shot it really well from the line in this tournament, despite shooting it at just 65% during the regular season. She's really competed her tail off in this game. I've been really impressed with Cochran. Little pressure at about 70 feet from Louisville. Sonano gets a deep touch and gets the whistle against Cochran. Monica Sonano. Goes to the line to shoot two. I'll tell you what, it, it's hard as a post player to battle and battle and battle on both ends of the floor and not get a lot of touches. And Monica Sonano's head has not gone down. Holly? Monica Sonano said she wouldn't be here playing for Iowa today if she hadn't gone through a really severe ordeal. She was in an ATV accident as an eighth grader. She was already playing varsity basketball but didn't really love it. But then she was in a wheelchair for the entire summer, a broken arm, a broken leg, a long period of time where she couldn't even run. That time away from basketball made her realize just how lucky she was to be playing. She said, my love for the game grew. And when she could finally run again after months of rehab and physical therapy, she was back on the court, and here she is now. They've become an all-time great at Iowa as Louisville takes the timeout to retain possession after Sonato's free throws. A 13-point Iowa lead with 3.29 to go in this third quarter. A trip to the Final Four on the line. Let's take a look at our bracket. We know that LSU has punched its ticket to the Final Four tomorrow. 7 p.m. Eastern, South Carolina, Maryland. That game in Greenville, and then here in Seattle, it'll be Ohio State, Virginia Tech. We'll have that game for you, 9 Eastern on ESPN. Can I just say kudos to Jay Billis, who had LSU advancing to the Final Four, 
his reasoning was that he's afraid of Kim Mulkey, but still, he had them <laughs> advancing to the final four in his women's bracket. Whatever the reasons, it worked out for Jeff. <laughs> his reasons were pretty sound. I agree. <laughs> Lob into Cochran. Van Lith gets a great look, and it's the three. That's a Jeff Walls ATO. Yeah, great drawn up play. You inbound to your post and then set a flare screen for your shooter. Van Lith has 20 for the eighth time in her last nine tournament games. Clark can't answer. Sonato got a hand on it, nothing more. Russell and Cochran combined for the rebound. Russell, spacing got jumbled up a bit for Louisville. Cochran dances around Sonato and then just could not finish the layup. Did the hard part. Clark finds Marshall, catch, fire, and hit! Tenth assist for Clark. Marshall's hit her last three from three after missing her first four. Robinson, wide open jumper, won't go. Rebound Clark. That is the sixth board for Clark, who throws it off Russell out of bounds. And both of these coaches are switching things up so much on the defensive end of the floor. And again, in the triangle and two, what do we see? A long two forced by Iowa from the player you might not necessarily want taking it. Caitlin Clark, the only player since 2000 with more than one game in the NCAA tournament with 20 points and 10 assists. This is her fourth. 28 points, 10 assists, six rebounds. She's eight of 13 from the floor, six of 11 from three. Clark gives it up. Marshall thought about it. Sonano working hard to try and get open and the foul called against Dixon. That'll be the fourth team foul on Louisville. Clark, by the way, her 17th double-double this season, the 43rd of the junior's career. Here is Clark, wide open, you bet! 31 for the Maestro. Sounds a little like Iowa City in here. Clark wants it back. Lisa Pluter calling out a play, calming her team. Biggest lead of the game for Iowa at 16. Clark bounces, Sonano is fouled, and Iowa will shoot free throws. You know it's coming on inbounds play, the screen, and Jones gets caught up for a second. Clark able to drain the corner three. Yeah, she has the crowd almost on a string as well. And Ryan, that entry pass to the post that she just made was just as impressive to me as the corner three. Well, Rebecca, the back-to-back -back shot, so the Caitlin Clark three is what Jeff Walls would consider too easy. You get hung up on the screen, that's too easy of a three. And then the shot that Morgan Jones takes on the other side is a contested two. So you're giving up shots you don't want to take, and then you're taking shots that Iowa wants you to take. Louisville playing right into Iowa's hands. Last two possessions, contested two by Jones, contested two by Mikasa Robinson. And while Robinson's gotten a lot better at that, those are still the shots Iowa wants them taking, Dre. You saw the career 30-point games for Clark. Meanwhile, Iowa shot at 7 of 12 in the third. Louisville, who shot at 53% in the first half, just 4 for 16 in this third. Van Lith scrapes through, can't hit. Clark grabs another rebound, her eighth, two away from a triple-double. Clark. Fakes the pass, leans in. Stokey there to clean it up. And Iowa's starting to separate a 19-point lead. Knocked away, Marshall, Clark, to the rim.
An 11-0 Iowa run. As one of the arena cameramen got hit there after the bucket and the official stop play. Right here, this is Caitlin Clark all on her own, jumping out to double team. She sensed that she could get the steals, that she could create some havoc, and she did and got the layup the other way. And Let's go. <laughs> Gabby Marshall approves. Everybody on Iowa involved in the attack tonight. Clark will get a brief breather. 33 points, eight rebounds, 10 assists, and four steals for Caitlin Clark, who continues to pen new chapters in college basketball history. Louisville had closed to one with 9.08 left in the third. It's 30 to 10 Iowa since. Jones able to finish. That's Morgan Jones' game. That's where, she's at, where she excels. A quick first step, in particular when she can go to her strong right hand. Molly Davis letting the clock wind. Shot clock turned off. Marshall, ball fake, jumper. No. Rebound, Cochran, and that's how the third will end. Louisville cut it to one, and then Iowa stepped on the gas. Bounds away from a triple-double. She has 10 in her collegiate career. Second most in D1 history, only Sabrina Gonescu with more. Can Louisville fight back once again? Cochran puts it on the deck and rumbles in for two. And yeah, I'm not surprised. You see Louisville pick up in some full court pressure. They really need to quicken the pace of this game and try to do it on the defensive end with getting some of those turnovers Lisa Bluter was talking about. Narika Kono into the game for Louisville. Clark decides to take. Why not? And Jones just threw a hand up in the air like, what more can I do? And, and Jeff Walls was just shaking his head, smiling, looking at Caitlin Clark, who he coached with under-19 Team USA. Knocked away, Russell loses it, Clark has it, get ahead, Marshall in for two. Caitlin Clark can control the crowd's emotions and she can control the game, whether she's stepping into a three or being active defensively and assisting to a teammate. And her fingerprints have been all over this game. Knocked away by Martin. Carr able to save it momentarily. Louisville back to it as we send things over to Holly Rowe. Well, you referred to it. Jeff Walls actually coached Caitlin Clark in their under-19 Team USA Gold Championship medal game in 2019. And Jeff was really cool about it. He said, you know, I've actually reached out to Lisa Bluter, her coach, and said, is it okay if I text her from time to time when she sets these records? And you see her there with Haley Van Litt. They were teammates along with Paige Beckers and an incredible staff. And there's Jeff Walls coaching this young group of women. And, and so Coach Walls will text her from time to time. When she had a game winner with 1.5 seconds left over Indiana recently, he texted her and talked a little. You know what? They have a great relationship, but I'm sure she hasn't forgotten. He didn't play her much in those games because she wasn't big and strong enough. Other people played ahead of her. I bet you anything that's on her mind tonight. <laughs> and I bet you anything her minutes would change now for Coach Walls. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Here's Clark, sidestepping three, not that time. Even her misses look pure. Here's Van Lith, who's had a really strong game herself. Van Lith hops into a triple, bounces out. It's going to stay here. Loose ball foul goes against, I believe, Warnock, who just checked back in, and that's going to be her fourth. That's where her, one of her teammates needs to raise their hand and say, no, no, that was on me. Yeah. <laughs> Anna Stolke into the game for Iowa. An 83-61 lead for the Hawkeyes. 
By the way, you can hear at home. The Iowa fans in this building are deafening. And Louisville has a great contingent of fans themselves. That's just how boisterous and involved Iowa's traveling party has been here in Seattle. You see them littered throughout the building. Well, it was striking at the Big Ten tournament, which was held at the Target Center in Minneapolis, that it was a heavy <laughs> Iowa favorite kind of crowd. But that's a drive from Iowa City. I mean, this is ridiculous to have this kind of presence out in Seattle. Clark got a hand on it. Carr gives it back to Cochran, who will fire from three. Can't hit. Just four for 20 now in her career from downtown. Marshall left alone. In and out. Kept alive. Martin, who is considered the glue of this Iowa team, wins another possession. Clark with 36, 8, and 11. Clark behind the back into the lane. No. Rebound, Cochran. Olivia Cochran, 12 points. And 12 rebounds in this game. She's done a really nice job for Louisville. Robinson, no, follows it up. Sets up Carr, a clean look. That's short. Robinson, so scrappy, puts it in herself after another offensive rebound. And a delay of game on Louisville after the slap from Robinson. Shot goes in, and yeah, just tapping it out. And that's an advantage to the defense who wants to set up their press. That's why it's called. Clark gets hit on the pass. No foul called and a turnover from Iowa. Contact there with Russell, but not sure if Clark might have embellished. No, no she, she got she an didn't. elbow to yeah. the face. Obviously should, should have been a foul call yeah. for a crew that otherwise has done a really nice job tonight. Yes, they have. Robinson can't lay it in. Sonano the rebound. Six thirty to go. Iowa looking ahead to, to the Final Four for just the second time in program history as Clark asserted her way to draw that foul on Carr. <laughs> Carr like a little sibling just yeah. sticking to Clark as she's walking around before the ball's inbounded. Right, I mean, one of the things you may notice if you were watching Caitlin Clark for the first time, even if you're not, she's six foot tall. She is a big point guard. Now, they just gave Clark another rebound, so she is one rebound away. Oh, you know what? They take it away? They took it away. Give we're, it we're, giving it to away. You. we're giving it to you in real time <laughs> as the stat monitor changes. There has never been a 30-point triple-double in the NCAA tournament. Here's Clark. Knocked away by Russell. 15 to shoot for Iowa. Clark lost the handle. Bounces in. Sonato, great position. And the foul called on Cochran as Monica Sonato will go to the line. And yeah, we were talking earlier about how impressive she's been in terms of her field goal percentage and how rarely she dribbles the basketball. And the other piece of that is about a third of her shots are with her left hand. And she's a right-handed player. See the numbers there. In her career, entered this game with over 2,300 career points. She and Caitlin Clark, the only pair of teammates in Big Ten history to each score 2,000 points in their careers. Sonano will be done after this season. Clark has at least one more. Cochran turns and hits. Jeff Walls has to like what he's seen from Olivia Cochran tonight. Yeah, I've been super impressed with her. Here's Clark, guarded by Robinson. Clark draws the foul. That is the fourth team foul on Louisville.
Five straight Elite Eights for Louisville. Longest active streak in the country after UConn's loss yesterday to Ohio State. And that's going to be a foul on Monica Sinano. That will be her fourth. So four on Warnock, four on Sinano. Not too much real estate left for Louisville to take advantage of. But still something to keep an eye on as Madison O'Grady will check in for Iowa. And O'Grady gave Iowa good minutes in that win against Colorado. Just curious, is a triple-double alert a notch above a triple-double watch? Like, are there degrees and will the color change? <laughs> As our alert like, level rises. I think we have to consult a meteorologist. <laughs> Van Lith hits the jumper. 22 for Van Lith, just five in the second half. Pressure from Louisville. Clark zings it across. Warnock in with those four fouls. She's been terrific tonight. 15 points, six of 10 from the floor. Marshall. Eight to shoot, back to Clark, thought about it. Six to shoot, Clark bounced it away. Taken by Carr, three on one. Carr to Cochran for an easy two. And there's still time left in this game, now down to 16. Clark tosses it across the timeline. Warnock will back it out. It's important to remember that Iowa has experience against a very good press, and Ohio State handled it well when they played them. They have not been bothered, for the most part, by this Louisville pressure. Clark tried to whip it inside, a 1.6 on the shot clock. Iowa, a little more than four minutes away from heading to the Final Four. Caitlin Clark, answer Dale. A farmer who Jan says she learned her work ethic from, has been traveling back and forth to see her father throughout this postseason. They talked on Tuesday when Jan had just been named the assistant coach of the year by the Women's Basketball Coaches Association, and she shared the news with her father and his line to her was, the play is under review to see if the foul occurs before the violation. Of the whole nation, so proud of his daughter and what she accomplished. And we know that she's coaching with a very heavy heart tonight, and Iowa is playing the same way. at what the officials are looking at, whether or not the foul occurred before the violation. I mean... Yes? Yeah. The shot was also released before a shot clock violation. And as you see, Stolke taking the shot. Getting back to a foul on Black 10 at 0.3 seconds, be two shots. Getting back to Jan Jensen, one of the elite post coaches in the women's college game. The yes. way she has helped Monica Sinano, the way she's going to continue to help Hannah Stolke, the way she grew Megan Gustafson's game before Monica Sinano. I mean, the players, the post players, become incredibly efficient under her tutelage. Stolke, this is the second. Cochran secures it, 17-point Iowa lead. A little more than four minutes to go. Can Louisville make a push here? Cochran fades away and finishes. Olivia Cochran has a really shine tonight for Louisville. Here's Warnock. Warnock gets fouled by Russell, and McKenna Warnock is going to go to the line to shoot two. An 82% free throw shooter. Shoot. 
This is the first after our game. Sports Center with John Anderson and Michael Eves. Recap the day in college hoops. Breakdowns of the Miami LSU and Louisville Iowa game. And the game day crew stops by to get you set for the men's Final Four. And he's back. LeBron James returned to the floor Sunday. Sports Center next on ESPN and the ESPN app. So both free throws missed. Russell can't hit the three. Marshall the rebound into the arms of Clark, who remains two rebounds shy of a triple-double. She has 36 points and 11 assists. So it's still an alert. It is. Maybe even a watch. Clark dishes. Martin underneath. Has it taken? Cochran comes up with a steal. Van Lith has 22 points, 17 in the first half. Van Lith short on that three. Clark, will they give her a rebound? They will, I'm guessing, but they'll also give her a travel. So Clark up to nine boards, but she turns it over, and it's Louisville basketball. Fair trade. When you're two rebounds, I have a triple-double. <laughs> Seventh turnover for Caitlin Clark. Van Lith pops it up, no, but a foul. Sonano whistled for it, I believe, and it will be her fifth. So Monica Sonano has fouled out with 3.08 to go, and there is still a lot of game left. 15-point game, and Sonano is done. Her second miss from the line tonight, an outstanding free throw shooter. Third in Division I this season at 88%. Hits the second. Again, a smart sub. Give Louisville time to set up their pressure. Get Harris in, who's a long defender, get her on the ball. Clark gets it back. Sips up the floor. Will peel back. Try and run some clock now with three minutes to go and a trip to the final four on the line. 14 point Iowa lead. Outstanding press break, by the way. Clark. Working Harris. Here comes the double. Robinson timed it perfectly. And Robinson lays it in. It's a 12 point game. Eighth turnover from Clark. Warnock looking to break the timeline. Clark patiently walks it across. It's the one thing with Caitlin Clark. She always looks like she's playing the speed that she wants to play. An 11-1 Louisville run. Marshall in the corner. No rebound is Louisville's. Carr grabs it. And here comes Louisville with life suddenly. Van Lith is fouled. Louisville's in the bonus, and Haley Van Lith is going to the line. Just when it felt like Iowa had all of the momentum in these last, what, two minutes? Yeah. It's an 11-1 run. Three and a half minutes. And it's nervous time for Haley Van Lith's family as she hits the first. Holly? Well, Jeff Walls has continually said in the last couple of huddles, have some pride, have some pride, continuing them to fight. Olivia Cochran has stood up and yelled at her teammates, let's go. They're showing that fight right now and that pride. And this is now doable. Down 10 with 2.12 to go, a 13-1 Louisville run over the last three minutes and 47 seconds. Press from Louisville. Clark is fouled hard by Harris. That's not going to help those bruises on her knees, Rye. Might have added a couple bruises. Yeah, grabbing at that left elbow as well, as Clark will walk to the line. You've seen the fire and the emotion from Caitlin Clark in this game. Earlier in the season, she told Holly Rowe she came out of the womb this way. This fiery talked about growing up playing and crying after every loss. An incredible competitor who now has 37 points, 11 assists, 
nine rebounds. Her parents taking in the action as Clark misses the second. Door still open here for Louisville. Van Lith bounces away. Will fire? No. Cochran got a hand on it. Last hit. Louisville, and it's Iowa basketball. Warnock. Will inbound, she was ready to, had the basketball taken away. Now into the arms of Clark. Boy, Iowa has done a really nice job breaking this press of Louisville. Warnock into the lane, dangerous pass, but Stolke is fouled after a near turnover there from Iowa. Russell whistle for the personal. Well, both players just going for the ball and a hard, hard hit. Stolke to the line. You see the free throw struggles for Hannah Stolke in her freshman year, 46%. This is the first. Some turnovers, some missed free throws, and Iowa, who does not have a field goal since seven minutes ago, has still left the door open for Louisville. 88-76, Iowa's gone seven minutes and 15 seconds without a field goal. Cochran, deep catch, the turn, and the finish. It is a 10-point game. Martin trapped. Clark flicks it ahead. Three on one. Iowa will back it out. Warnock trapped. And a foul is called as McKenna Warnock will go back to the line. Iowa led 83-61 with 8.52 to go in this fourth quarter. A 22-point lead. Marissa Russell fouls out here. But Louisville, and this is part of the hallmark of Louisville basketball, always battling, always fighting under Jeff Walls, and they have managed to make things interesting down the stretch here. And part of the reason is Iowa is trying to manage the clock as best they could and take time off, but they are their best when they are in attack mode and zipping and moving the basketball, so they haven't been able to get that same kind of rhythm as they've tried to manage the clock. Warnock is 0 of 2 from the line. Iowa is 16 of 23, and Warnock hits that one. Iowa just over 70% from the line in this game. Clark remains one rebound shy of a triple-double. Warnock hits both, two big ones there. It's a 12-point Iowa lead. Van Lith dances into the paint. Van Lith gets fouled. Haley Van Lith will shoot two. Third foul on Hannah Stolke. At this point right now, it's most important for Iowa to defend the three-point line. And you don't want to give up any and ones. We also don't want to give up free throws because it makes it so much easier for Louisville to then set up in their press. Another strong performance in a tournament game from Haley Van Lith, who makes the first 26 points for Van Lith. See how well she shot free throws in the last five minutes of games in this tournament. Van Lith hits both. A 19-7 extended run for Louisville. Sonano fouled out. By the way, that out of bounds a few moments ago, if you were wondering, well, could they have looked at it with two minutes even on the clock? The answer is yes. Two minutes and under. Clark ahead to Marshall, who takes the layup, plus the foul. No problem. This game at all for Iowa against the full court pressure. And they get the shot and the and one opportunity. What do you like to say about Caitlin Clark in the crowd? She's got him on a string. She sure does. 
Is that what I like to say, or is it something else? No, no, that's, well, okay. that's at least what I was thinking, <laughs> so. Monica Sonano says that Caitlin has a fire big enough to light up our entire team. And one that's hard to put under a bushel. <laughs> <laughs> the free throw is good for Marshall. Gabby Marshall up to 14 points. All in the second half. Van Lint into the paint. Can't finish it. Nearly the 10th rebound for Clark. Couldn't grab it. Flick ahead to Marshall. And Louisville is just about out of time here. They are not going to foul. Now they will, with 43.6 to go, Caitlin Clark, a chance to add to her ledger. She's the conductor in so many ways, whether it's with the basketball <laughs> in her hands for her teammates or with the crowd as well. They gave Caitlin Clark that 10th rebound a moment ago, so Caitlin Clark is the author of the first 30-point triple-double in NCAA tournament history. 39, 10, and 12 for Clark. She, she, and she, went. <laughs> she wanted that rebound. I don't know if she knows she was just given a 10th rebound. Thirty-five seconds to go. It is all cosmetic at this point. Clark might end up with a quadruple double in turnovers. Kono keeps it alive. Into the corner. Hits the three. And Jeff Wall's gonna take a timeout with 25.1 to go. A 95-83 lead for Iowa. Jeff Walls joked with. Holly Rowe after the first quarter. We're gonna need more than 80. And he actually did Iowa 95-83 lead and Holly a really strong connection when it comes to Jeff Walls and the Iowa basketball program. That's right. You guys might remember the story of the tragic accident by a young woman, Ava Jones and her family that were coming from an AAU tournament in Louisville, Kentucky in July of 22. And, and the accident cost her father his life. But she and her mom were in a Louisville area hospital for over a month. Well, Jeff Walls immediately contacts Lisa Bluter because she is an Iowa signee and says, what can I do to help? He gets a car for the family. So while they're there in the hospital, the other members of the family have a car to get around town. This is the basketball community. Yes, they're competitive. Yes, they're competing against each other and trying to win. But in the biggest moment for their Iowa basketball family needed some help, Jeff Walls stepped up. And that is the beauty of basketball. It's a beautiful story, Holly, at the end of a tragic situation. And Lisa Bluter and Iowa are going to honor the scholarship as well, regardless of whether or not Ava can come back and play after the injuries that she sustained, although she is intent on coming back and playing for the Hawkeyes. They said she made a commitment to us. We are going to honor our commitment to her. So Jeff Wall's team will not advance to the Final Four this season, but another terrific year for Louisville basketball and more success in the postseason. Inbounded to Clark. Well, you know what? Caitlin Clark's got a chance at the 40-point triple-double now. Last time Iowa reached the Final Four, 1993. The champion was Texas Tech. Cheryl Swoops was the most outstanding player. Rebecca Lobo was a sophomore two years away from a national championship. <laughs> and Caitlin Clark has a 40-point triple-double in the Elite Eight. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable.
Came to Iowa with a mission to take this program to the Final Four, and it has happened. from Caitlin Clark after the 40-point triple-double and a hug from her head coach, Lisa Bluter. Ryan, we saw in the game today, Jeff Walls did everything that he possibly could to slow down Caitlin Clark, changed defenders on her, changed the type of defenses that were played against her. She is the primary focus always of the defense. And what's the result? Today, it's 40 points and a triple-double. It is remarkable. She is the one every defense is keying on, and yet she can still put up a performance like this. Historically great, and seems to consistently be at her best when it matters most. The clock will run. That is it for the first time since 1993. Iowa is headed to the Final Four. A nice moment shared between two incredible coaches. Lisa Bluter, in her 23rd season with Iowa, headed to her first Final Four. Haley Van Lith, a tremendous performance in the loss, 27 points for Louisville. A big hug from Jeff Walls for Caitlin Clark. And in case you're wondering when Caitlin Clark plays next, that's going to be Friday night on ESPN. Those are your plans. A program record 30 wins for Iowa. And their second trip to the Final Four in school history. Walks off, Clark celebrates with her teammates after engaging the fans, and Iowa is headed to Dallas. They join LSU, two more teams will come and punch their tickets tomorrow. South Carolina, Maryland at 7 Eastern on ESPN. The winner of that game will face Iowa. And the winner of Virginia Tech, Ohio State, who play 9 Eastern tomorrow night on ESPN, will face LSU. It all starts in Dallas at 7 Eastern on Friday. And Caitlin Clark, after a 40-point triple-double, is with Holly Rowe. You, you must be exhausted. It is the first 40-point triple-double in NCAA tournament history. No one's ever done it, Caitlin. How hard was it tonight? You know, I thought our team played really well. That's what it's all about. Um, you know, I was going to give every single thing I had. When I came here, I said I wanted to take this program to the Final Four, and all you got to do is dream, and then all you got to do is believe and work your butt off to get there. And that's what I did, and that's what this, these girls did, and that's what our coaches did, and we're going to Dallas, baby. It was a team effort. From Monica, you had a double-figure scoring from Warnock. You also had it from Gabby. Tell me how this whole team came together for this huge win. It's because we love each other, you know. We might not be the most athletic. We might not be the fastest. We might not, you know, be everybody, be the best defenders. But 
but you know we play for one another and that's going to take you really far that's what it's about our circle's tight um, and more than anything we're each other's best friends um, that'll carry you a really long way you guys just had this beautiful moment this circle is tight loving on your coach Jan who lost her dad today what is that moment like for you as you wrap her in your arms yeah I know her coach her, her dad Dale was watching from up above he had the best seat in the house tonight so doing it for her doing it for coach Bluter and the rest of our coaching staff you know they've been at this a long time they deserve it and they've given their heart and soul to the state of Iowa and our program so I love them to death they believed in me and believed we could be here and now we are what will it take not just to get to the final four but to keep winning Caitlin Clark playing together that's what it's all about you know we want to be the better team we want to be have a tighter circle and um, you know when you're having fun and playing with the passion and joy you know that can carry you a long way but it takes everybody on our team all 15 girls the five girls on the court but also the 10 that sit on the bench it's every single one of them um, and I love them to death all right how about we see you in Dallas right, that's the plan I'll see you there Holly. all right what a performance from Caitlin Clark.